Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. In today's second video, uh, so it's going to take us to around the 21st of August. I'm going to go a little bit beyond that with the uh, GFS, which is now getting very uh, much into the time frame of the late summer bank holiday weekend. And in fact, the first update counting down to the late summer bank holiday weekend will be with you at Gas Lobbies this evening. We'll be releasing the first bank holiday weekend update this evening, which is coming kind of like closing the door then on all of these summer events forecasts at uh, Gazo. That's about the last thing uh, that uh, that we do in terms of the summer events. So that'll be with you this evening. We've already released a weekend forecast. You can find that on the uh, page for the uh, weather forecast of weekend. Going to start off quite unsettled, but uh, it will become uh, rather more settled in the south. A bit of a north-south split actually setting up this week with a fair amount of dry and warm weather in the south, uh, but more unsettled up in the north. And of course, we'll touch on that in uh, today's second video update in any case. So, we'll begin, though, by having a look at uh, a couple of pictures that have been sent through to us. So, uh, first of all, Stanny has sent this uh, picture through from uh, Kufla, or Kuflu, in uh, Poland. Uh, so, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm sure someone will correct me if I didn't. People do get terribly upset with me when I pronounce the names of these places wrong. So, hopefully, I did that one okay. Uh, anyway, this is lightning yesterday in uh, Kuflu in Poland. So, um, big bolt of lightning there. And there's a couple more really big uh, flash of fork lightning uh, there. And also another one. Uh, just there, so it looks like there's a really intense storm going on in uh, Poland uh, yesterday. Uh, and then also Liam has been back in touch with us. So uh, Liam has had two storms and had another one uh, last night. This is the third storm in three days uh, that Liam has had in uh, Maidstone. So uh, again, this is Liam Campbell from Maidstone. Uh, you can see the lightning uh, just there with him. Very sort of uh, very dramatic looking skyline and cloud uh, there. That's another one uh, from uh, Liam showing uh, really intense fork lightning in uh, Maidstone yesterday. And another one of fork lightning, uh, sheet lightning I should say, uh, in uh, Maidstone in Kent uh, yesterday. So some big storms around not only in the UK but also over in Poland as well. Remember, we will feature your weather picks in the videos if you would like us to. You can email them to us at gasweathervids at gmail.com. Uh, you can also share them with us on our social media accounts, Twitter and Facebook, and post them in the comment box at Gazovitz. And when we get the time, we are always happy to uh, feature your uh, weather picks in the video. So a big thank you to... Uh, to Stanny and to Liam for sending through to us uh, their weather picks. Right, we'll get on with the video and we'll start off with what's happening in the tropical Atlantic. So this is the latest in terms of Atlantic tropical cyclones from the National Hurricane uh, Centre. Again, not much going on. It's been a very quiet start uh, to the season this year. We have got an area of thunderstorms here in the central part of the tropical Atlantic. We've got less than a 40% chance of becoming a tropical disturbance. But yeah, I suppose over the next few days it needs monitoring. It might do something. But at the moment, just an area of thunderstorms there in the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean. Over in the Pacific, it happened a much more lively start to uh, the hurricane uh, um, season in the Pacific. Uh, things are a little bit quieter now. We have still got uh, a tropical storm uh, going on there. So uh, we've got Kirsty in the central part of the uh, of the tropical Pacific Ocean. And we've got this area of thunderstorms down here that might develop into something over the next few days. Again, that one has uh, a less than 40% chance of uh, developing into a, uh, into a storm in the next few days. Kirsty is forecast to weaken very dramatically. At the moment, uh, Kirsty is still a, uh, a tropical storm just here, 
But uh, by the end of today, uh, Kersey should be down to a uh, tropical depression. And then uh, eventually we'll see Kersey weakening down to just a, a general post-tropical uh, depression as the storm, uh, that was storm Kersey, moves further uh, out into the central part of the uh, tropical Pacific Ocean. Right, coming back closer to home, these are the 500 bit of our high denominator flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which, which we'll have a look at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 bit of bars, 80,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere where high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. And blues extrapolated to low pressure, yellow, orange and red extrapolates to high pressure. So these are mean flow charts for the next 7 to 10 days. Takes us to around the 21st of August. We finally got below average heights up to our north with the ECMWF and above average heights down to the southwest. The black lines indicating the jet stream coming across the Atlantic and into uh, the UK uh, rather like that. So the most unsettled conditions with that would be up in the north. The driest conditions will be down in the south and the southwest, close to that ridge of high pressure. It's a proper zonal flow. We talked about this in the video uh, yesterday. It looks like we're going into a period of zonality uh, at the moment. So uh, it is a, a proper zonal flow that we've got, but that doesn't mean it can't be mainly dry down in the south, of course. At this time of year, the Azores High is still going to be relatively strong. So for southern parts of the country, we are protected quite a bit by the Azores High. There should be a, re a reasonable amount of dry weather for uh, many central southern parts of the country, but for the north, it will be more unsettled. You're more exposed to that zonal flow. And so for Scotland, Northern Ireland, at times Northern England, you can expect expect some uh, rain to be coming through. The uh, GFS is very similar in the 7 to 10 day time frame, below average heights to the north. It does make a little bit more of this ridge for me, Azores High, so it's a little bit closer to us, which gives, particularly England and Wales, a reasonable amount of dry and potentially quite warm weather. Again, the flow and the jet is coming through across the country, so again, most affected by that jet stream up to the north. The driest and warmest of the weather will be down uh, in the south on the GFS scenario. They're both quite close to uh, one another, though. Uh, GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles looking like this. We're in Edinburgh uh, today. So we've got the military tattoo going on, uh, I think, uh, today. And also, of course, it's the Edinburgh uh, Fringe Festival taking place in August, as always. So the red line here is the 30-year other air temperature average for uh, Edinburgh, and we can see a, signs of a bit of a zonal sine wave, actually, what I was talking about in the video uh, yesterday. So where we've got these warmer uh, episodes just here, that's where uh, we're getting the warmer sectors coming in with the areas of low pressure. When we see the dips going on there, uh, that is when we've got the cooler sectors coming in. So again, definite evidence, particularly for northern parts of the country, of a zonal uh, sine wave, overall reasonably uh, warm with this. So even in the north, it's still probably going to be a little bit warmer than average. Uh, daytimes might be a bit suppressed for temperatures uh, by day, but by night it should be reasonably uh, warm generally, except you happen to come inside one of those cool sectors uh, with a nighttime period. Uh, later on, we lose that zonal sine wave, uh, as we usually do in the extended range of these ensembles. You'll see this a lot more uh, when we get through to the autumn and the winter. Uh, in the extended range, you tend to lose the, uh, the warm and the cold sectors, purely because each ensemble member brings those warm and cold sectors through at different time intervals. So you do, as you get further out, kind of lose the definitive zonal sine wave, but it doesn't look as though it's a big deviation from average anyway with the upper air temperatures for Edinburgh. A regular bouts of rain coming through as well, so we've got some wet weather coming up tomorrow, some more uh, around middle part of the week. Wednesday could be quite wet in the north, and then after that, we have got further precipitation spikes. So certainly for the northern part of the country, it does now look as though we're entering into quite an unsettled period, uh, but it won't be as unsettled down in the south. Temperature anomalies are looking like this from the 11th to the 19th of August. They're still coming out a little bit uh, warmer than average. That's what I was talking about with the zonal uh, spell of weather, you will generally have above average temperatures, uh, a little bit less so for the north in the summer 
Um, in winter, of course, zonality will always be warmer than average. It'll always be warmer with a zonal westerly flow in winter than a cold uh, easterly flow. This time of the year, in the summer, zonality, for England and Wales, it will t- generally usually be still a little bit warmer than average because you're close to the Azores high. But sometimes Scotland can actually come out uh, a little bit cooler than average in a zonal flow uh, in the summer. Anyway, for the next week, uh, from the 11th to 19th of August, most places are close to or a little bit above average with the temperature anomaly. Precipitation anomalies look like that. So for many western parts of the country, coming out a little bit wetter than average, exposed to those westerly winds in the southeast, you'll notice uh, it's a little bit drier than average down there. Again, that's the influence from that uh, ridge from the Azores High. So this is how the GFS is looking for Tuesday, because all of this is covered in the weekend forecast. So on Tuesday, most places are under a ridge, but by Wednesday, low pressure is moving back in off the Atlantic. That could bring some really quite wet weather to the north and the west on Wednesday, but the south and east, it should be mainly dry. It could be very warm in the southeast on Wednesday. We might get the temperature certainly into the mid 20 Celsius, upper 20 Celsius temperatures are possible in the southeast on Wednesday. So that's going back into the 80s Fahrenheit. But by Thursday, we're actually bringing in these cooler west to northwesterly winds again. So this is another cool sector moving in on Thursday. Then Friday, well, again, you see what's going on. We've got the ridge building from the Azores. That's the Azores high uh, just there. Its ridge is building into France. Uh, So for southern parts of the country, again, close to that ridge, mainly dry weather, but we've got this deep area of low pressure. Actually, it's a little bit autumnal, that, for northern parts of the country, bringing uh, wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic to Scotland and to uh, Northern Ireland as well. That takes us to Saturday, so there's some sort of weather front moving down across the country uh, on Saturday. That could be bringing more persistent areas of rain, and it will introduce cooler air back in from the northern Atlantic as well. Uh, then we go into the second half of next weekend, and we try to build this ridge up a little bit more uh, with the uh, GFS. So high pressure has a go at taking over by the time we get to day 10. We're looking like that, which is Tuesday 21st of August. Still really the north-south split going on, so it's going to be quite a disappointing spell of weather if you're up in the north. I suspect I'm going to start hearing from people in Scotland, in Northern Ireland, probably in parts of Northwest England, about how the summer has really gone down the tubes because uh, this is going to be quite an unsettled spell over the next week to 10 days for northern parts of the country. But down in the south, I suspect I'll uh, be hearing from people telling me that uh, it's still pretty warm and uh, uh, it won't be as hot as it has been, nowhere near due, uh, due to this change in the weather pattern. But it should still be very warm at times in the south. And the main thing is still a lot of dry weather in the south and southeast with this ridge from the Azores High. But for northern areas, I'm afraid your summer is, uh, is deteriorating quite a lot here on these weather patterns in the next week to 10 days. In the more extended range, I know this is all unreliable, but the um, uh, GFS actually builds in this high pressure a little bit more as we head up towards the uh, late summer bank holiday weekend. Have more about that in today's third video, which will be coming up around uh, 7 o'clock this evening. Then we've got the ECMWF looking like that. So, uh, again, Tuesday, under a little bump of high pressure, should be a mainly dry uh, day, actually. But by the time you get through to Wednesday and Thursday, it's turning more unsettled. Wednesday could be very warm, briefly, in the south. But by Thursday, we're turning the back, winds back in to west northwesterly direction. So, cooler conditions taking us through to the end of the week and quite showery up in the north. Next weekend is looking like this. A little bit more unsettled next weekend uh, compared to the GFS. And that's been the case with these two models quite a lot over the past few days. The ECM has always tended to be the more unsettled of the two with the GFS the most um, the, the most strong out of the two in trying to build up this ridge from the Azores High. And I have to say at the moment it does look as though the ECM is coming out uh, more low, because I think as we're going along, it is turned out to be a little bit more unsettled than the GFS has been forecasting. So it's interesting uh, differences between the uh, GFS and the ECM at the moment. Only subtle differences, but does make quite a big difference for the south. Anyway, for the north, it's going to be unsettled, whatever model we're looking at. It's going to be uh, quite unsettled for Scotland and Northern Ireland. But for England and Wales, the GFS will give us quite a lot of dry and warm weather, to be honest. 
over next week to 10 days. Uh, but uh, the ECM is just a little bit more unsettled. This is quite an active weather front that's coming through the country here uh, next weekend, uh, midnight Sunday uh, the 19th. That's an active front that's heading in. Uh, that would bring quite a lot of wet weather, probably even down to the south and southeast. We go up to day 10 and we look like that with the ECM. It's uh, Tuesday, 21st of August. The north-south split goes on. But again, the ridge from the Azores High is just that little bit weaker. So as this low pressure heads in from off the Atlantic, that could bring some wet weather even down to the south and to the southeast as well. And then finally, the GM is looking like this. So uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of uh, unsettled weather to come in the north. Uh, some of that rain will get down into the south through the middle part of the week after a very warm day on Wednesday into the second half of next week. The north-south split goes on. So this is closer to uh, the GFS. We've got the high pressure ridging in from the Azores to uh, France on Saturday next week, a week away. But northern parts of the country do look quite unsettled. Uh, we go up to day 10 and we're looking like that. Still rather changeable a mix, to be honest, particularly so for northern parts of the country. A lot of dry and warm weather down in the south, although by day 10, we'd probably be taking some rain even into southern parts of the country by that uh, day, 21st of August. So we're going into a north-south split. I've been highlighting this a lot over the uh, past few days in the videos. Northern parts of the country, I'm afraid your summer is rapidly deteriorating uh, now. So if you're watching this in Scotland or in Northern Ireland, probably in northwestern parts of England, unfortunately, your summer, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, because some people don't like hot weather, um, but uh, whatever your view is, your summer is going a little bit down the tubes in the next week to 10 days. Further south, we are hanging on, uh, hang on for dear life to this ridge from the Azores High. At times, it is going to be put under pressure. So at times, we will bring rain even down into the south and the southeast. But overall, unless the ECM is right, and that is a more unsettled solution even for the south, but overall, it doesn't look as though England and Wales just about cling on to this ridge. And whilst nowhere near as hot as it was back in July, we should still have a fair amount of warm, possibly even some very warm days, and a lot of dry weather in the south and southeast too. Uh, it'll be interesting where this goes as we get through into the final stages of August. There's two ways this could go. Either the Azores High could start to reassert itself in the final week or so of August. If that happens, we could end up with uh, another spell of summer weather the final week of the month, possibly uh, possibly coinciding that with Bank Holiday Weekend. Uh or the alternative is that this Azores High is uh, it's, all, it's already going to be under pressure in the next week to 10 days. The alternative solution is that the Azores High could actually be pushed out of the way. And if that happens, then uh, we'll probably go into an autumnal spell of weather through the final week or so of August. Maybe have some proper cool, wet days. And uh, at the end of August, when uh, it turns cool and wet, it can be... Uh, really quite unpleasant, actually. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, at the moment, we're holding on to the Azores High for dear life in the south. But in the north, your summer is, unfortunately, uh, going a little bit wrong. Right, that's all for now. Come back later on when we've got uh, our first update for the uh, bank holiday weekend. So I'll be with you this evening. Tomorrow, of course, we've got more autumn analogues. And also, we'll have Gazza this Sunday roundup as well. So come back to that tomorrow. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.